physics towers have been almost expendable in the history of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory's underground nuclear testing. They've had to be. This has been an important regulating factor in the amount of equipment and number of experiments conducted in the tower. Among other things, the collapse has signified a varying degree in loss of equipment and structure. Operations had to be undertaken to retrieve what was salvageable for use in future experiments. These are no longer necessary. In the summer of 1969, a tower as tall as a 10-story building was successfully retrieved at the Nevada test site. It was the largest successful retrieval in the history of U.S. underground nuclear testing. In the Physics 8 event, there was a pig in the line of sight pipe directly below the surface of the ground and a sled over the pipe at ground level. After detonation, this sled, as well as another on the second level of the tower, would be the first to be pulled out of the structure. When the sleds had cleared the test hole, the pig would be winched out of the line of sight pipe and into the tower, signaling the start of retrieval procedures. Estimates of the collapse ranged from five to 10 minutes after detonation. Although Yucca Flats, the area where the event took place, had been known to crater as early as two and a half minutes. Preparations for Physics 8 began about nine months before shot date. Emplacement of line of sight pipes and other operations at the test hole were done simultaneously with the fabrication of the tower. Experiments were conducted by J-11, J-12, J-14, J-16, P-3, and W-8 Except for outriggers fitted to the bottom of the tower, it looked very much like any previously used. The outriggers extended to carriages, which were emplaced at each corner of the tower. Each carriage had four wheels, which sat on rails. In all, there were four parallel rails, two tracks, which ran from ground zero to a point 400 feet away. Everything went as planned, although test participants had been apprehensive as to whether or not the tower could be retrieved before cratering occurred. Four minutes after detonation, the structure had cleared the critical area, and the first successful Los Alamos tower retrieval had been accomplished. Predictably unpredictable, the collapse came 23 minutes after detonation. The fact that more data has been collected from the Physics 8 event than from any other in the Los Alamos history of underground nuclear testing is due in part to the new tower concept. Experimenters feel that more equipment can now be mounted in towers, although there is still a risk factor involved. However, it is sufficiently low as to warrant the escalation to more elaborate experiments. Besides, as one member of J7 observed, this was the first time we didn't have to pick up our vacuum pumps at the bottom of a crater.